Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood by Hirohiko Araki Chapter 1 Prologue Read by Amadeus Author's Note Put simply, the theme of this work is living. Through the two main characters, I want to examine two ways of living. It's all about singing the hymn of the battle between human and non-human. This work was made for your enjoyment. I hope you like it. Without further ado. A woman is tied to a stone slab, while a shadowy figure points a knife made out of stone at her. The shadowy figure reveals itself to be a man who wears a mask, and that is too made out of stone. The man raises the knife with both his hands and shouts, Blood is life. As soon as he shouts this, he pierces the woman's chest with the knife, and blood starts spurting out. The man continues, Fresh blood of a maiden will be absorbed by the mask. The demonic mask will come to life from blood of the living. The blood covers the stone mask. Suddenly, Sharp, claw-like bones burst out of the mask and affix themselves in the man's head, piercing his skull and brain. Everything is silent for a moment, and then a distant voice exclaims, Amazing! Absolutely amazing! The man is still alive, even after being impaled by the mask's claw-like bones into the brain. The man whose brain was impaled shouts, I finally obtained eternal life. The crowd that was watching bursts into cheers. The man with the mask points to another one who was kneeling before him and says, You, do you wish to become my life force? The kneeling man raises his head and confidently says, Yes, my lord. The man with the mask approaches the kneeling man and pierces the kneeling man's neck with his fingers. The kneeling man's veins become visible and the man with the mask says, I can feel his life force. The demonic mask had given me its unimaginable powers. Suddenly, the man with the mask shoves the kneeling man into the ground and creates a huge crater which also destroys part of the stairs from the platform he was on a feat that only extreme strength could achieve. Everyone in the crowd starts shouting. All of this happened in the 12th to 16th century BC, at the center of Mexico, where a powerful tribe dwells, a tribe known for its sacrificial rituals and cannibal traditions, also known as the Sun People, Aztecs. Blessed with the power of the stone mask, this tribe dominates the earth. The stone mask. It has granted them not only power, but eternal life as well. However, this tribe somehow vanished from history and left countless unknown ruins. Why? What happened to them? What's the secret surrounding the mask? This story depicts the mysterious stone mask from Mexico and its raveling of destinies of two youngsters and their bizarre adventures. We now find ourselves in the year 1880. A sick old man is lying on his bed in a rather empty, run-down room where the walls are cracked. A sign of poverty. The old man is weak and keeps coughing. Through the cuffs, he manages to muster the strength to utter, Dio, did you even hear what I said? Dio, come here. Do you hear me, Dio? The old man extends his hand to a young boy who is reading a book while sitting in a chair. The young boy named Dio slams his book shut, sighs, and says, What is it, old man? You need medicine? 
The old man says, No, no medicine. Dio, I need to speak to you. Dio rises up from his chair and approaches the old man. The old man quietly whispers, I don't have much time left. I'm dying. Dio affixes his gaze and the old man continues. Dio, before I die, I have something for you. The old man pulls out what seems to be a letter with an address on it. When I die, go to this address on this letter. This man owes me, and he will take care of you for the rest of your life. He owes me big time. Yes, it was 12 years ago, a rainy day in 1868. I can never tell Dio what happened that day, the old man thinks to himself. The cliffs tend to crumble on rainy days, and carriages often slip here. I was on my way home with some girl from the bar when... The old man starts visualizing that night in his head. Ah, <laughs> look! There's an accident, exclaims the old man. He starts descending toward what seems to be a carriage that fell on the cliff. The girl next to him shouts, Hey, I'm not getting involved! Idiot, it's a rich man's carriage! The old man gets startled after seeing one of the victims who is pierced all over by some of the wooden debris left by the carriage. Whoa, this guy is dead. The old man then finds another victim lying on the ground. Suddenly, the sounds of a crying baby starts echoing. The girl, in spite of saying she was not going to get involved, rushes to the carriage. She sees something and shouts, Hey, the lady in the carriage is dead, but her child is still alive. The old man protests, Child? Forget the child! As he says this, he pulls out a golden ring from the victim's hand. The girl notices this and snaps at him, w What are you doing? Stupid, can't you tell? A rich man's woe is a poor man's blessing. <laughs> the girl, realizing what the old man's plan is, says, Yeah, right, you're smart. The old man then notices a briefcase. He opens it and sees a weird mask made out of stone. He whispers, What's this? Disgusting mask. I don't want it. The old man turns back to the victim and yells at the girl. Hey, help me open his mouth. I'll sell his teeth to the dentist. The girl turns to the old man and gets startled as if seeing something strange, then says, H Honey? The old man, not noticing that the girl was looking behind him, shouts, What's wrong? We'll take his teeth to the dentist and sell it to the nobles. Suddenly, he feels his hand being grabbed. It was the victim lying on the ground. The victim is a man wearing nice clothes, which give away his social status. The victim weakly addresses the old man. Y you When the old man realizes what's happening, he leaps back in shock. He is still alive! The victim, starting to regain his consciousness, asks, you, You're taking care of me. Thank you. The old man looks at him, puzzled. M my wife, my wife and child, are, are they all right? The old man then informs the victim of what happened. Everyone is dead, but your child is fine. The old man then realizes this in his mind. He thinks I was trying to save his life. After receiving the terrible news, the victim lets out tears and says, 
I wish I could take the place of my wife instead. Luckily, my child survived. As he says this, he tried to reach for his inner pocket in his jacket, but finds nothing. I'd like to thank you, but it seems that I was robbed of my wallet and ring. The old man flinches. The victim continues. My family name is Joe Star. Thank you for saving my life. Please, tell me your name, so I can reward your kindness accordingly. The old man takes off his hat and thinks to himself, Fool. No harm in telling him my name. <laughs> then informs the victim, I am but an unworthy commoner. My name is Brando. The sick old man tells Dio the story of what happened. Mr. Joestar gave me money, which I used to start my own hotel. But not only did my business fail, but my wife died as well. Now I'm on my deathbed. Dio, when I die, go to the Joestar estate. You have the brains to become a very rich man. Dio watches the old man with no expression on his face, as if waiting for him to just finish talking. A few days pass, and Dio finds himself in a cemetery on a windy day. He looks down at the tombstone, which reads, Dario Brando, born 1827, dead 1880. Dio frustratedly thinks, Mother suffered because of you. You were scum. You want me to be rich? Ha! Your inheritance I'll accept. I will become rich and powerful, but not for you. Dio lets out one last scumbag as he spits on his father's grave and leaves. It's the 19th century, the era of technological advancements and social change. Although famine and poverty still reign, everyone was given a dream. A dream to become rich. This type of gold rush swept through Europe like hurricane. Somewhere on the countryside, in a field, two young boys are teasing a girl. They stole the girl's doll and keep passing it between them and refusing to return it to the girl. Give it back, you'll break her arm, the girl shouts while crying. Hey, Irina, did that dad of yours buy it for you? Must have cost quite a lot, one of the boys says while letting out a smirk. The boys look at each other, and one of them says, Strip the doll, see if it looks like the real girl underneath. Erina stops chasing them and cries. Ha, Erina, the cry baby. The two boys shout while looking pretty happy with themselves. Suddenly, another young boy shows up on the scene and shouts. Stop it! The two bullies and Erina turn to the boy. Give the doll back to her! Are you Erina's friend? The two bullies angrily shout back. The boy starts running towards them and says, No, but I won't let you bully her. The boy tries to tackle one of the bullies, but is met with resistance. His tackle did little to phase the bully. The boy starts punching the bully, but to no avail. The bully being punched angrily shouts, Saving a damsel in distress, eh? I hate guys like you. Now I'm gonna teach you a lesson. The bully clenches both of his hands and hits the boy on the back of his head. The boy falls to the ground. Ha! This guy is useless. This is hilarious. From hero to zero. Hey, you know this loser? The other bully replies. He doesn't look familiar. Maybe he's the only son of the Joestar family. 
I hate rich smugs. If he's from the Joe Stars, I swear I'll punch his teeth out. The boy pulls out a handkerchief from his pocket in order to wipe the blood from his nose. The two bullies then see the inscription on the handkerchief, which reads, Jonathan Joestar. Ah, so you are a Joestar. The two bullies start kicking Jonathan while he's still on the ground. Damn it, you think you're great, huh? Let's get him. Once they finish giving Jonathan the beating, they start walking away and exclaim, You rich kids piss me off. Let's go. Erina, after watching what happened, slowly approaches Jonathan, extends her hand and tries to help him up. Jonathan slaps her hand away and shouts, Forget about me. Go somewhere else. I didn't get into this fight because I wanted your attention. It's because I'm going to become a gentleman. Gentlemen don't just sit and do nothing when a lady needs help. They must have the courage to help those in need. Even if they are at the disadvantage. Jonathan turns around and walks away. Someday I will win. Erina notices the handkerchief on the ground and reads the inscription. Jonathan Joestar. Erina, trying to make sense of the situation, thinks. Why? Why did you take out your handkerchief? If it weren't for that, you wouldn't have gotten beat up. I guess that is the requirement of a gentleman. Jonathan reaches his house and notices a carriage approaching. The carriage stops. The door opens and the briefcase flies out of the carriage right into the dirt. A blonde boy then jumps out of the carriage next to the briefcase. He then rises and averts his gaze towards Jonathan while giving him an intense look. Jonathan slowly approaches him while thinking to himself, who could that be? Oh right, he must be Dio Brando. His father died, and to repay him for saving father, we took Dio into our family. Jonathan then addresses Dio. You're Dio Brando, right? And you must be Jonathan Joestar, Dio replies. Jonathan extends his hand for a handshake and says, Everyone here calls me Jojo. Suddenly, barking could be heard approaching. A dog was running towards them. Jonathan kneels down and exclaims, Danny! Jonathan turns to Dio and informs him, My dog's name is Danny, and he's very smart. Don't worry, he won't bite. He'll get used to you soon. Dio gives no reply and lets out a strong, <laughs> Danny tries to approach Dio, and is met with a hard blow from Dio's knee. Danny falls to the ground. Jonathan clenches his fist, then angrily shouts, You! What are you doing? That's too much! Dio takes on a fighting stance, and starts thinking to himself. So this is the Joestar heir, the only son, Jojo. I'll psychologically torture him to the brink. Then I, Dio, will take his place as the heir to the Joestar estate. <laughs>